The Great Australian Emu War, one of the silliest and weirdest wars in world history. During the Great Depression, where food was scarce in the continent of Australia, the emu population were destroying farmland in rural Australia, leading to a food shortage. As a result, the Australian government decided to literally declare war on their emu population. Hello everyone, welcome to Top 10 History, your hub for historical lists and amazing history facts. Today we're going to look at 10 amazing facts about the Australian Emu War. Make sure to watch until number 1 because the number 1 fact that we chose about the unusual Australian war might shock you. Before we begin, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on because we release a new historical top 10 list every single day. Also make sure to smash that like button. Alright, let's get right into the video. The emus were an environmental disaster. The man who was responsible for dealing with the emu crisis, George Pierce, once said, those who didn't live with the emu couldn't understand the damage they did. And he was right. In a very literal sense, the emus were destroying the livelihood of millions of Australian citizens. The emus were destroying crops, causing starvation throughout Australia. The emus were eating all the crops, tearing holes in fences, enabling other animals to get in, and they were destroying the farmer's property. This forced many farmers to relocate, declare bankruptcy, and some farmers even got so frustrated that they took their own lives. As silly as the war may seem, the emus were literally ruining people's lives, making it a little more understandable of the extreme measures the Australian government took to handle the problem. Not to mention this was all happening during the Great Depression, as if times weren't already bad enough. They thought it would boost the government's image. Times were tough. The Great Depression was happening in full force. The emus were causing a famine throughout the country, and as you can imagine, the Australian people were going through a tough time. George Pierce, the man in charge of slaying as many emus as possible, thought it would boost the image of the government and use the war to gain some publicity. They sent out camera crews so that they could film the emu war, hoping to broadcast the good deed he was doing and gain support of the rural population. Pierce wanted to be regarded as a national hero. However, things didn't turn out as planned since Pierce made the farmers pay for this production if it turned out to be a failure in the end. Which, as history tells us, the Great Emu War was a massive failure. It angered the urban population. As previously mentioned, George Pierce believed that if he went to war with the country's emu population, it would boost his popularity with the rural population and he would go down in history as a hero and the man who solved the Great Agricultural Crisis. However, Australians who lived in the cities were utterly disgusted by what was going on. People in the cities thought this was inhumane and they began protesting. Not to mention that the emus was Australia's national bird, which were literally being slaughtered by the hundreds with the machine guns. Pierce claimed that killing emus with machine guns was no less humane than killing the emus with hunting rifles. Although attempting to justify himself, the people in cities remained unconvinced. The emu were excellent tacticians. The emus proved to be a very difficult opponent for the Australian military, and this came as a big surprise, as it's hard to imagine that a pack of dumb birds would be able to outsmart and outmaneuver highly trained veterans of war. When the emu were fired upon with machine guns, they would immediately scatter into smaller groups and would run away at about 40 miles per hour. With the emus running in every direction rather than remaining as a herd, it made it very difficult for the emus to be targeted by the guns. They were essentially using guerrilla warfare tactics, making them a very tough enemy for the Australian military who were used to conventional warfare. The emu were even seen to be communicating with each other, with the tallest birds in the pack always keeping a lookout for the rest of the pack. Also being that the emus were used to being hunted annually during the hunting season, they were already trained to invade hunters. The emus were very hard to kill. We just talked about how incredibly invasive the emu population was, as they would scatter and run at high speeds in every direction when they were under attack. In response to this, the Australian military tried to get closer to the emus, as trying to kill them from a long distance proved to be much harder. However, even after only getting 100 yards away from a mob of a thousand emus, after unloading entire loads of machine gun rounds at the mob of emus, they managed to kill only about a dozen of the thousand emus. Why? Apparently the emus were bulletproof, having bodies that can withstand bullets. The emu had feathers that were so thick that even bullets weren't enough to take an emu down. The only way to kill an emu, the soldiers discovered, was to shoot them in the head, which proved to be extremely difficult. Major Meredith once said that if we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. They tried chasing emu down with trucks. 
After being deeply humiliated by the start of the war, and having only been able to kill a few dozen emus after using up thousands of rounds of ammunition, the Australians had to change their tactics if they were to ever have hopes of winning this great war. What they tried was mounting the machine guns on the back of trucks and chasing down the emus as they were running away. However, the rough Australian terrain proved this also to be a failure. The Australians also tried moving north and targeting emus up north who were supposedly less aggressive than the southern emus. This was also a failure and the Australians struggled just as hard as they did before. Things got even worse when their truck rammed into one of these emus, whose body destroyed the vehicle making it completely inoperable. That's right, the emus were doing so well at the war that they were even destroying military vehicles. It was truly a shameful defeat for the Australians. The Australian public ended the war. As we previously mentioned, the Australian urban population already hated what was going on and immediately started protesting after they learned what was going on. However, after seeing how badly George Pierce and his men were failing at this operation, soon almost the entire Australian population were agreeing that this was a terrible idea. The press were having a field day and were claimed that despite all of the expenses of the operation, only a handful of emus had actually been killed. Because this conflict was getting such bad press, the Australian government surrendered to the emus. That's right, the Australian government once declared war on their emu population and they lost. How embarrassing. And the worst part is, all of the farmers had to pay the bill for all the expenses and damages, causing the farmers to be in an even worse situation than before the war started. The farmers kept fighting. As previously mentioned, the emu war left the farmers in a worse situation than before the war. Not only did the government fail to greatly reduce the emu population, but now the farmers were stuck with taking responsibility and paying the bill for the whole mess. At the end of the day, the emus were still making a life a living hell for the farmers. The farmers demanded that Meredith and his gunners come back and keep dealing with the situation, as the problem clearly had not been fixed as promised. They even called out the people who lived in the cities for being partially responsible for ending the emu war and demanding that it resume so that the emu population is taken care of once and for all. And this actually worked. The emu war resumed due to the popular demand of farmers who were still suffering. Number 2. The Second Round of the Emu War there was no denying the first round of the Emu War was a complete failure. Thousands of rounds of ammunition were expended just to kill a few dozen birds, causing the Australian government to surrender to the Emus. But as we just talked about, the problem was far from solved and the farmers demanded that they keep trying. However, after learning from all of their failures, Meredith and his men performed much better on their second attempt at the Emu War. On just the first day, they managed to kill about 300 Emus, which might have been more than the first half of the Emu War. By the end of the second half of the emu war, 3,500 emus were dead and the farmers noticed that their crops were drastically improving. Not only that, the press was growing bored of the situation and didn't have anything else clever to say about the situation, so the public disapproval of the whole situation began to wane. How they solved the problem So did the emu war solve the problem once and for all? Well, not quite. Even after gunning down thousands of emus, this was not a permanent fix to the problem. One, the emus were populated. And two, the country experienced another hard drought three years later and the emus came right back. So the farmers were once again back to square one. The government was not willing to declare another emu war being that the first one was a complete disaster. Not to mention that other countries were having a field day with what was going on and Australia became a laughing stock to the international community. Instead of declaring another emu war, the government instead offered a cash reward for each slain emu. This turned out to be successful as 30,000 bounties of slain emu were collected during the first year. But the ultimate solution that solved the emu problem once and for all was constructing better fences around the farms. These new state of the art fences were considered emu proof and once they were built the farmers did not have to depend on having to murder thousands of emus a year just to keep their livelihood. Did these facts shock you? Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on more amazing historical facts and much more. If you like this video, check out this next video on the 10 facts about Vladimir Putin. Alright, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.